Hey everybody, welcome to my shop. I want to take a minute today and, and to go over something that, uh, that I think is extremely useful knowledge and that people tend to overlook when they're, when they're learning some of their bushcraft skills or some of their uh, skills that will help them to, in a survival situation and that's uh, your basic knot tying. <coughs> my son is involved very heavily in Boy Scouts <coughs> so we learned very early on the importance of, of knots and knot tying. So I thought just as a novelty, I'd go over the, the seven required Boy Scout knots and more importantly, what their use, the real world use is. Uh, if you're gonna learn knots, these seven are, are, are obviously a good cross section and a, a, good, uh, a good way to start, a good basic knowledge of knots to get, you, to get you carried through if you ever needed the knowledge. So let's just go over a couple real quick and, uh, and what their real world uses are and what the advantages are. So I got two pieces of paracord here. Yeah, one yellow and one orange. The first knot we want to go over is called the square knot. Now if you have, what this knot's primary use in life is, is if you have two different ropes that you need to attach together, then you would, you would use a square knot to get them together. So the way that the square knot is tied is you take both pieces of rope and you get the ends and you do right over left then take your ends that you now have together and do left over right. Now the way that you know that you've gotten this knot, knot tied correctly is you will have a, little, a knot that looks similar to this that you can see will actually move on each other. If you do that correctly and cinch it up then you have a square knot and you've attached two different size ropes together. The next one we want to go over is two half hitches. Two half hitches is primarily used to begin, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, to just attach a rope basically to something or just to tie to something in general. So what you'll do is you'll go around the object you're going to tie, go inside the loop one time, and I mention this because this comes into play, I mentioned the one time part because it comes into play later. Inside the loop one time, then outside the loop and back through itself. You may want to pause this video if I'm going too fast for you. Then cinch it up. This is hard to do one-handed here. Or hard to do while angling the camera. And you have two half hitches. Okay. That rope is, is a pretty stout, strong rope. One that you can pull pressure on. And the knot won't, won't really move or give in either direction too much. It's a pretty stout knot. Now the next one I want to go over is called a uh, timber hitch. The timber hitch is used kind of what it sounds like. It's for, say, if you're going to drag a piece of timber and you don't want to you know, pick it up with your hands. You imagine this was a piece of timber or something you're wanting to drag. You would wrap the rope around it. You would come back to itself. Get a little bit more on my tag in there. <clears throat> you would come back to itself. You'd wrap around, come back to itself. Then you go through at least three times. One, two, three. Back on itself. So you got your standing in, you got your tag in, you've pulled back around to itself. I'm going to go through four times. Then as you cinch that up, it gives you a good solid, as long as you're pulling it and applying pressure to it, it gives you a good solid pull. It holds very well, very strong. And so you'd then be able to drag the timber or to back to your campsite to use for fires or for shelter building or whatever it is you're using it for. Now, as a, as a bonus to that, if you're, if you're using this to drag the lumber and you go to pick it up, you see how it begins to swing and sway if you have to lift the lumber. If that's the case and you have to lift the lumber, if you will take your, your rope, the tag end or the standing end, and either loop, just take a bite of the rope and loop and wrap around a little further up on the log, right? Or if you'll just basically take your, your standing in and just run it around the log and then just come back through itself a little further on up the log, when you go to make that lift, you're going to give it a more stable platform because it has two areas and more of a... Uh, an eye beam or a more of an eye shape. So it gives you more of a stable platform to lift when you're lifting. It doesn't 
wobble and, and, and move around as much uh, so that you wouldn't swing around and uh, potentially injure or damage something. Okay, so that's your timber hitch. Next one we're going to go over is a clove hitch. Clove hitch's primary use is to uh, is to <clears throat> excuse me begin lashings. If you're going to lash two pieces of wood together in any form or fashion, you would use this particular knot to get it uh, to get to start it. It holds very well uh, and comes out extremely easy if you ever have to untie it. So you'll just go around your object with your tag end, go on one side of the rope that you just started. I need a little more here. Go on one side of the rope with the one you just started. Then go on the other side of the rope. Then you're going to find the X. There's an X in there somewhere. See, there's my X right there. See how this forms an X? And you're going to go back through that X. And pull it up. And that is your clove hitch. Now, as long as I'm applying pressure to that, that holds very well. As I let go of pressure, it loosens up and releases so that if you needed to untie your lashing, you could. <clears throat> Alright, the next one we're going to go over is the bowline. The bowline is probably the one of the most important knots that, you'll, that you could ever learn. This knot can literally save your life. The bowline knot is one of the strongest holding knots and is, is what's called the life-saving knot because if, if they toss a rope down to you from a helicopter if you're in the water, they want the bowline knot tied in the rope so that they can put it around your waist and pull you back up, that kind of thing. Or uh, in a, a mountain rescue or a cliff rescue situation, a bowline is a very common and extremely strong knot. It's also kind of complicated to tie. So we're going to do the rabbit method. Um, so we're going to say this is your rabbit. The tag end is the rabbit standing in as a tree, right? So rabbit, you're going to make you're going to make a six with the rabbit hanging down. You got your tree standing in. Your tag end is your rabbit hanging down as a six. So then that six makes your hole. So now you got a tree and a hole, and then your rabbit. So the rabbit is going to come up through his hole. He's going to run around behind the tree. Then he's going to go back down inside his hole. And you're going to grab the rabbit. So in other words, where the rabbit went up through the hole, and where the rabbit's coming back down in the hole, right here, you grab the rabbit. Pull the tree. Okay? That forms a bowline knot. One of the strongest knots once it's tied. It's called the sheet bend. S-H-E-E-T-B-E-N-D. It's similar in nature to the to the um, square knot where you're attaching two two ropes or, or items together. But when I'm when I'm thinking about the sheet bend, I picture if I had to tie a, a, a thin rope, piece of rope, it's at, this one's primary use is actually tying two different size ropes together. I have two same size ropes, unfortunately, to demonstrate this with. But but the point is you, you would imagine this is a smaller rope and this is I imagine it is a sheet. Like a, you're trying to escape from a hotel if there was a fire, and I had a piece of rope that wasn't long enough, and then I had the sheets off of my bed. So it's a sheet bend. That's kind of the way I picture it, although I don't think a sheet would actually hold my weight. But at any rate, so you would take your, your larger rope, so say this was the sheet or the larger of the two ropes, and you would take a, a loop in it. You would just make a loop in the end of it. Doesn't matter how long necessarily, although I would suggest giving enough area to hang out just in case it started to slip by some chance you'd have a longer distance that would slip to come undone and you would take your smaller rope okay and you would go up through the hole of the larger rope or the sheet or whatever right then you'd go around it and then you go back in between the area where the smaller and the larger rope are. So it would look something like this. Then as you cinch that up, that's going to provide you a very stable and strong connection between the two, the two ropes, the two different size ropes. 
And again, this is primarily used for two different size ropes as opposed to two similar size ropes. The tilt line hitch is one of the most useful knots of all of the seven. It's used generally to pull tension when you're connecting your tent to a stake on the ground or if you're, say for example, <coughs> excuse me, tying a tarp off of a ridge line, angling it down towards the ground and you need to pull in tight and, and pull tension up on the line, this is the one that you would use, the taut line hitch. So similar to the uh, clove hitch that we did earlier, or I'm sorry, the two half hitches we did earlier, you're going to make your loop and where you did one on the inside and one on the outside of that loop for the the knot we did earlier, the two half hitches, we're going to do two on the inside. So you make your loop one. So I'm trying to do this for the camera and so I'm not as good at it. One and two, two on the inside of that loop then one on the outside. See I just came around and I'm going to go back through. So we did two loops on the inside of the, the large loop, one on the outside. You pull it up tight, <coughs> which is called dressing the knot. So you dress the knot Believe it or not, dressing a knot properly, tying a knot properly and making it look decent not only looks better, but it actually helps the knots to function better. So in this case, as I as I dress the knot properly and actually put just a couple of extra seconds in tying the knot, it makes the loops which then slide, which provides the taut line part of the taut line hitch. So say if this was your stake, you would be able to attach to the stake, then you would be able to pull pull your line tight or loose according to what you needed, make it larger. But as I was saying, by dressing the knot properly and getting it a little more neat and clean, it provides less resistance for the slide on this particular knot. Uh, and almost all knots are that way. If you'll dress them or tie them properly and actually take a second to, to do a, a, a little better than just tying the knot, a lot of times it, it helps and makes it just a, a better knot holds better, works better, serves whatever purpose that that particular knot is intended to serve. So that's it. That's the seven I wanted to go over today. I appreciate you stopping by to watch this video. Thanks for, for taking a few minutes of your time. Uh, it, it, I very strongly suggest that if you get the opportunity, you take a minute to look up on the internet the, the seven required knots for Boy Scouts and or any other knots and uh, get a ba at least a basic grasp on what, what knots are out there and, and what their uses are. Because uh, seriously, guys, this that's a uh, something that gets used by me at least very frequently.